Hey everybody, it's Becky J. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to repot my Calathea Orbit Peacock. Orbit Folia. Um, yeah. And no reason specifically, I mean I have a little browning right here, but I believe the soil is just too dense. And I got this a while back, and I'm not talking like two weeks or even two months. I got it a while ago. It has not grown. It has nothing. It hasn't died, but it hasn't gotten bigger and it hasn't sprouted anything new. And I know they're extremely slow growers, but I still want to repot it. And I'm going to put it back in the same pot, but I'm just going to do a different mixture. Something similar to what I would do for aeroids, but less chunky. So it's got um, the cactus and succulent potting soil mix. Uh, the, what is it? The verseculite. Ver, ver, vercu, it's the perlite stuff, but that's not perlite. It's the better stuff. And there is, let's see, some orchid bark. Not a whole lot, but enough. There is uh, the charcoal chunks. Not barbecue charcoal, but like a horticulture charcoal. There's coir in there. Is it coir or coir? C-O-I-R. I don't know. We all know what I'm talking about. Um, I feel like there's something else in there. And then I'm going to add worm poo and mosquito bits because uh, the gnats are making me mad. But let's get this out of the pot and see what we're looking at root-wise and everything because I feel like it's just too thick and she's gonna, she can't breathe. She's gonna just Yeah, it's, it's like a really thick, almost like just regular potting mix. Oh. So, it looks like there was some growth. See, her roots are so small right now. I'll show you this new growth thing, but it wasn't popping up above the soil yet. I'm so afraid to harm the roots because they're just super fine right now but look there's that new thing and then here's the potting mix like I said it was it's just like an all-purpose mix and they don't want that it's too too thick too heavy too bog ish I guess it reminds me of like a bog they just stay too wet and they don't get enough air to the roots to be able to grow big and strong and thick because, I mean, all of these are so, they're just so little and so fine. And I'm so afraid I'm going to do damage just by, like, massaging the dirt off of it. That's what's going on. That's, okay. That's what it is. She still has her plug paper. See that? That was the paper from the plug. I'm actually going to remove that. I hate that when nurseries just, it's like mass production of plants. They don't understand what a specific plant needs. And so everything is just mass produced in the plugs and they're sent out in a pot. And then you have people who don't understand what's going on with their plant. I should have thought about that, but I usually just leave my plants alone and she wasn't dying. So I left her alone for a long time. And then I was like, something's going on. She's not, she's not doing anything. So yeah, she was still stuck in her plug paper. I don't know what that's called, but poor thing. So she wasn't able to do as well as she could. So that's cool. We're going to repot her today in proper 
medium and we'll talk about happiness requirements for these kind of plants because usually I mean I, I'm a calathea killer I can't I can't ever do anything right with them and for some reason I was like this one's holding on this one's holding on but she's not doing anything and then I started researching more and I was like well I'm I'm gonna make a go with this one and see how she responds to the new mix okay I'm just checking the roots out. They look fine. Nice and white. I don't see anything rotting. So, I'm just going to repot her. Okay, let me put some medium in the pot and then we will discuss, like I said, what what is required to make this plant happy. Okay, now I don't remember if I showed you, but here's the mix I'm going to use. Yeah, I just showed you. Okay, so we're going to put some in here. So the cool thing about these is they actually, this plant actually originates from Bolivia, which is neat because like, I know like aeroids and stuff, a totally different, I know, but they come from like Indonesia, they come from jungles. So it's just kind of neat. It's, it's Bolivian. Their light requirements, they like like medium filtered lights. So don't smash her up against the window. Uh, you know, don't put her in the shade. But just a nice, like where I have her now, um, about 14 feet away from an east and south window. So she was like in the corner of the room. Um, really seemed to like it. She was next to a humidity tray because um, they do like humidity. Um, average temperatures for indoor, you know, 65 to 75. Uh, they do really well. So they like their soil mix to be well draining, you know, so don't get it so thick that it can't do anything. Um, they like regular watering, watering, so like don't starve it, don't dry it out. I'm kind of reading to make sure I've got it right. Uh, filtered, distilled, or rainwater, that's fine. I always have to use bottled water or jug water anyway because our tap water is way too hard. I'm having issues here. <laughs> I feel like my organ bark is too chunky can't get it to move out of the way so yeah a well joining draining potting mix uh, you could use like just perlite and coya but I actually like a bunch of different stuff because they all have different things that they do you just use a well balanced fertilizer once a month not a whole lot I use the fish fertilizer that's it's fertilizer made out of fish, I guess. Uh, they all seem to like it. You could also use fish tank water. I've heard that's really good. I just don't have a fish tank anymore. Okay, humidity. They like humidity. So I have mine not on a humidity tray, but next to a humidity tray. I'll show you in a little bit when we put her back. Oh, my foot's falling asleep. And then I have like a humidity monitor meter thing over there so I'm able to check it, it's a good spot for her um, but they say high humidity so I, I, I don't know this could be I don't think humidity was her issue I think it was that stupid uh, what, what do you call it what, what did we call it the plug thing Okay, I'm just, I put her in there. I'm just kind of packing the soil around it to stabilize it enough while I fill up some more. I'm going to go ahead and add in some worm poo at this point around the base. Uh, they don't really like to be repotted very much, so I didn't want to mess with her. But I was like, she's just not doing anything. Something's, I felt like something was wrong and I wanted to really take a good look at those roots. 
Um, but they really like to be root bound. And I was like, this pot is not big enough. I mean, <sighs> she's not big enough to be outgrowing this pot already. I knew, I just knew something wasn't right. But yeah, I'm, I really like this plant. I like prayer plants, but I have a hard time keeping them alive because I ignore my plants. Sometimes. Depends on what room they're in. If they're in my bedroom, they're babied. And that's when I really got to notice more. I was like, something's not right with this one. And I've had her a long time. Like a long time. She should have done something. But I'm so excited. I mean, now you can see that there is actually some type of new growth in there and she was just so restricted. Ugh. It's plant abuse, you guys. So when you get pots, I mean, <laughs> get pots too, but when you get plants from nurseries that aren't like specialists um, in a specific plant, you know, especially if you've gotten them in the mail, let your plants acclimate for the week or two it needs. And then go ahead and take a look and dig around because you'll find a lot of these people, they just take them out of the plugs and put them into a pot with just plain old potting soil. And it's just, it's not right um, for that plant. You need to research all this stuff. So yeah, I'm using a chunky mix, not as, like I said, not as chunky as I would use for alocasias and stuff like that. Um, but this will allow the roots to get the air they need while still draining fast, but not too fast so that she does retain some moisture. There we go. I am gonna probably trim that. I don't know, I may just leave it. It's not hurting her. New growth is now above the soil so it can get some magic. Okay, so yeah. So, I mean, light, like I said, don't throw them in a closet. Not in the shade. Not right up against the window. Don't burn them. Um, a good rule of thumb is if you can read in the light, then it's fine for the plant. Uh, the soil... Don't let them dry out, but don't drown them to where it's soggy and boggy, and you should be fine. A lot of times they kind of try to tell you too. They get sad looking if they're too dry. This is kind of neat. I didn't know this. I was looking some stuff up on it just to make sure I, you know, like I said, I had all my information right. Um, the Orbit Folia is one of the largest calatheas. It says it's bold oval leaves can grow to a foot across. The, uh, yeah, that's, I've seen other people's in their videos and I'm like, mine doesn't look like that. It's not gonna, something going on with the soil. So I'm glad we did that. Okay. If you have any questions, you can ask below, or of course there's always Google. My favorite place for good information though, is like Facebook. I belong to a couple Facebook groups that just all these people know all these cool tips and tricks that I never would have thought of. So, you know, it's worth looking into. Okay, I'm going to put some mosquito bits down because I'm tired of the gnats and I'm excited to get rid of them. They are everywhere. You can also make like um, the tea with the, my dog's crying at me because I'm not paying him attention. You can get the mosquito dunks and make like tea for it and use that. Okay, uh, let's go put her in her place and we'll be done. Okay, so this is her happy little home. She's right next to the humidity trays for my colocasias that I got. So, humidity is not an issue anymore. Oh, look at that yellow leaf back there I have to trim. And it gets really good, bright, happy morning light, but not too hot. And then just good, solid, medium to low light in the evenings and afternoons.
I don't know why I'm showing you that. Oh look, it's still no change. So, yeah. Maybe we should update. I might update in like a week or two if we see anything happening with this little nub here. But I don't know. Like I said, they're slow growers. But that's her, her spot on the shelf right next to the humidity tray. Alrighty. Bye. Okay, you guys, here is my Orbit Folia. It's been two weeks. Remember, there was like a little tiny thing down here that was going to grow. Okay, after two weeks, take a look at this. Look how big that thing is now. She's getting ready to bust out a big old juicy leaf. Ugh, there's a gnat. Ugh. Isn't that amazing? Because it was only down to like here. So all the care that we did, everything that happens, amazingly worth it. I'm so happy. So yeah, if your plant is like stunted, it's not doing anything, it's not growing, but it's not dying, maybe just repot. I don't know, but it worked. Yay!